welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my experience with LASIK eye surgery. Uh, I just want to give you a fair warning before we get into anything. I will be talking about medical procedures, eyes, things going into eyes. Um, so if you are triggered by medical things or eye related things, this is not going to be the video for you. Um, I will go into detail about my experience and um, I will do my best if something gets especially nitty gritty to uh, put a timestamp in so you can skip ahead, but just know this video is about eyes and surgeries, so there's your warning. I threw out a question box on my Instagram and on Facebook for y'all to send me questions if you had any about my procedure, and I actually got a lot of replies. So we'll go through those questions today. So I had several people ask me why I decided to get LASIK surgery. Uh, for me, the reason was mostly that my career, or at least the career that I hope to have in acting and in musical performance, uh, would be a whole lot easier if I was not glued to glasses. And for me, contacts were not an option. My prescription was pretty heavy, plus I had astigmatism, which means that um, there were parts of my eyes that were not perfectly circular, like the normal person's eye would be, and they weren't perfectly smooth. Fitting people with astigmatism plus fitting someone with a heavier prescription um, can be a lot more complicated than just fitting someone who's farsighted or fitting someone who's nearsighted. For me to wear contacts, I had to wear daily contacts, so a new pair every day, um, which are a lot more expensive than contacts that you can wear for a week or two weeks or even a month um, before you change pairs. And uh, they were also very uncomfortable because they had to be very, very, very thick lenses. and. I already have dry eyes, so for me to have these super thick lenses on top of my already dry eyes, it was drying them out even more. I tried contacts a few times, and every time I wore them, I wanted to claw my eyes out because they were so uncomfortable. So knowing that contacts just weren't an option, I wanted to be able to go out on stage without glasses. I've done shows where I didn't wear contacts and I didn't wear glasses and I just did it blind and it was terrifying and I did not feel very safe. It's just not smart at the end of the day. That was the main reason that I wanted to get LASIK eye surgery. A couple people asked about the pre-op process. The great thing about LASIK is unlike a lot of other surgeries where they'll tell you to fast for 16, 12, hours before your operation, LASIK they tell you make sure you eat. So there wasn't any sort of fasting um, involved in this pre-op process. What I did have to do was I had a couple of eye drop prescriptions that I needed to get filled. One was a steroid and one was an antibiotic and I had to get those filled and start using those every four hours the day before my operation and then the day of no drops that morning, just go in. I had my operation at 8 a.m., so I literally woke up and went. After the surgery, you can eat, drink, anything that you normally would as well. Several people have asked if you really are awake during the full operation. The answer is yes. <laughs> um, I also got a lot of questions about whether or not you can feel anything, so here's where we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of it. If you don't want to hear specifics about the operation itself, go ahead and skip to this time code. You are awake the entire time. I am someone who has pretty bad anxiety surrounding medical procedures and being touched in general, I'm just not a super touchy person. If I know you, I'll give you a hug, but like, strangers touching me, no thank you. I was given Valium before I went in, and they do some eye drops in your eyes that will numb your eyes, and those do their job. So they gave me Valium, they gave me numbing eye drops, 
and then they left me to sit in the chair for a few minutes uh, while they got the OR ready and uh, kind of let everything soak in and start to do its work. And then they brought me into the OR and during the LASIK procedure there are two different machines that you will be under. So the first half of the operation is making a flap. <laughs> I believe it's called the corneal flap. Not professional, disclaimer, not professional. But basically what they do is you sit back in this chair and this is the worst part of the whole operation. They take this little circle thing, it's about this big, okay, and it goes on your eye and they lift your eyelids so that it will fit on your eyeball and it suctions to your eye. That feels horrible. I'm not even going to sugarcoat that. It felt just the worst. Um, and that for me lasted, I think it's about 15-20 seconds that you are there with the suction on your eye. And while that instrument is suction, suctioning, um, while that instrument is on your eye, they go in with a laser and they make a cut around your eye so that they have a flap. And then what they'll do is flip it up. So you've got a layer of your eye that's been cut and then they'll flip it up, kind of like a doggy door. Um, they'll do that on each eye, if you're operating on both eyes, I think most people probably would. Um, they'll flip it up and they'll bring you to part two. Part two is the actual um, reparative LASIK surgery. So they will put you in that chair, your flaps are still up, and they'll have you focus. They have me focus on this uh, orange light. You can't really see anything, by the way, because everything's very blurry because your eyes are quite literally open. I did have a question. My friend Abby asked if you could smell anything as the lasers do the work on your eyes. I was warned that I would smell a like burnt skin smell or like burnt hair smell. I didn't smell anything, but you know, COVID is happening. The office that I was in had the requirement that you must wear a mask at all times, including while you were in surgery. So I had a big thick mask on over my nose <laughs> and maybe I would have smelled something had I not had a mask on, but I didn't smell anything. For me, I had to be under the laser for almost a full minute, which is unusual. Uh, most people will only need to be under the laser for about 30 seconds. Um, because I had such a heavy prescription and astigmatism, they had to take more time. So I was under the laser for about a minute, and that part does not hurt at all. It is not uncomfortable. You just kind of have to wait it out. Especially after experiencing suction cup ring thing on your eye, it's nothing. After the laser does its job, then the surgeon will come back in and this is the like by hand part I guess of the procedure and he will flip the flaps back down and then he'll literally take a tool that's kind of like a tiny plastic spatula and just squeegee it I suppose they get it to lay nice and flat again they did a rinse of not sure what it was to be honest but they rinsed my eyes with something and just this repetitive, gentle, I don't want to call it a scrape because it, that's too harsh of a word, um, but just to get everything to settle back down into place. Um, Maria asked me if I felt like Woody from Toy Story 2 when uh, the like doll repair guy takes the Q-tip and is like cleaning his eyes. Yes, I literally, was thinking about that while the surgeon was in there with his little tool. It felt exactly like that. So that's the nitty gritty of it all. It should be smoother sailing from here on out. So some specific questions. I've had a few people ask how long the recovery process is. 
For me, it's been a little bit longer than the average person again. Um, I had farsightedness and astigmatism that they were working with, so that's um, a more complicated prescription to correct. So for me, it took a full week to feel like I could really see things again. Everything was blurry and not very clear for a while. And it took about a week for me to feel like, oh, I can, I can see things. And it continues to get better each week. I am almost a month out from my procedure now. I will have my one month post-op soon. My eyes are doing very well. I can definitely do all of the things that I would normally do now, which is great. I have not tried driving yet. They did tell me that especially nighttime driving is going to be out of the question for a little while. While your eyes heal, there's an interesting sort of starbursty halo effect that can happen when you look at a bright light in the dark. Um, so headlights and traffic lights uh, when you're driving at night definitely get this effect. I've been in the passenger seat and experienced this several times where you're driving and then there's a light and it's just this burst of light with like streaks coming off of it everywhere and then this weird glowing circle around the whole thing. It is it would definitely not be safe to drive while you're experiencing that, so no, no night driving for a while. A lot of people have asked how expensive it was to get the procedure done. It's going to vary a little bit depending on, you know, which office you go through, which surgeon you go through. Some insurance plans might cover something like LASIK, most probably won't because it's not, not your annual visit and it's also not an emergency procedure of any kind. But you can definitely expect to pay at least $1,200 an eye. And that can go up to, depending on where you go, $3,000 an eye. It really depends on where you go and what your vision plan is. I paid just over three for the whole procedure. I'm scrolling through looking at questions and I'm seeing a lot of people just ask about the recovery process in general So let me just break that down really quick. The recovery process is a little bit different for everyone It really depends on how your body handles the procedure. Some things that are mandatory for every recovery process are number one Your shields These are the shields that they will send you home wearing. They're these clear little discs with a little protrusion there and when you finish your procedure at the office they will use some uh, skin safe tape and tape these to your face over your eyes they are vented they've got little holes in them so they're not gonna fog up or anything these are to protect you from yourself and everyone else while your eyes heal um, during the first 24 hours and then every night for five days. Um, different offices might have different uh, rules for how long you wear your shields. For me, I had to do 24 hours post-op and then every night for five nights. Every four hours, I had to do a steroid and an antibiotic to prevent any sort of infection. Artificial tears will be your best friend. When you have the procedure, obviously your eyes are open for the entirety of it, and that means having your eyes open, unblinking for extended periods of time while things touch it. That really does a number on your eyes. <laughs> Not to mention, you know, just lasers frying them. So artificial tears are a must. They also sent me home with these awesome 2007 dad sunglasses. I was told to be very careful about sun exposure, um, especially in the first week. There were also certain activities that they uh, discourage or will straight up just have a rule against for the first week to 10 days. Some of those activities were things like campfires, you know, you don't want the smoke in your eyes. Uh, no swimming pools or hot tubs for the first week because you don't want to get that chlorine water or salt water in your eyes. They had advised me against cooking for several days. 
um, because again, steam or your eyes reacting to things like onions and garlic and things that can, can cause a reaction. They basically just told me, act like you're full on sick for three, four days to just allow your body to rest and recover. And then most people are back to normal. Uh, most offices will do operations on Friday. They'll give you a one day post-op on Saturday just to make sure everything is initially healing well. And by Monday or Tuesday, a lot of people can go back to work. So it is for the average person a very quick recovery process. Um, for me, it's a little bit longer again because of that heavy astigmatism and farsightedness. Definitely the most frequently asked question was, was it painful? I guess I would say, no, it wasn't painful, but it was very uncomfortable. The part where they actually do the corrective lasering, that is not uncomfortable. I wouldn't call that uncomfortable. You're just kind of there and it's pretty quick. You do not feel anything at all. But that initial uh, flap creation with the lovely uh, suction cup eye ring thing it's just the worst it doesn't hurt but it it just it's a very very strange and uncomfortable sensation and it's not fun <laughs> Nikki asks how long the clear vision will last for most people they will be fine until the eyes would naturally begin to deteriorate because of age really. I was told that because I was getting this operation done at a young age, I'm 23 right now, I should expect to be completely fine until I hit my 40s or 50s, at which point I should expect to probably need reading glasses, which is pretty normal. They basically described LASIK as hitting a reset button on your eyes, so it kind of the goal is to get you back to square one with 2020 vision and then as all parts of your body do your vision will slowly deteriorate as you age nikki also asked if i have any regrets so far uh no i don't have any regrets if anything i wish i would have done it a little sooner uh, and not waited so long but no i don't regret it at all I can do everything that I could do before, and as my eyes continue to heal, hopefully I will be able to do more. Keller asks if I will miss my glasses. I, you know, I really don't know. The ironic thing about all of this is I never really planned to get LASIK. I was really afraid of the idea of it, and my husband Daniel is the one that convinced me to finally do it. But I had just spent a ton of money on a whole bunch of new pairs of glasses because I was like, I'm stuck with glasses for the rest of my life, so I'm going to get cute ones. So I bought like four pairs of glasses and now it's like two months later and I can't wear any of them anymore. So far, I do not miss them. There were a lot of things that I was really looking forward to being able to do that I couldn't really do with glasses. Uh, I love fake eyelashes and I couldn't wear them with glasses because they're too long and they push against the lenses of your glasses, so I'm really excited about fake eyelashes. And eye makeup in general, it was always just kind of annoying to me that I would like spend all this time on a cute makeup look and then like half my face gets covered with this shield of glasses. Okay, I think I've covered pretty much everything that everyone sent in. If I didn't hit your question and you're still curious, please feel free to DM me or shoot me a message on Facebook. Uh, I am happy to answer any other questions y'all might have about LASIK eye surgery. Um, overall, I would say it was a great experience. I'm really glad that I did it. And if you are someone who is thinking about the possibility of maybe investing in LASIK eye surgery, I would definitely encourage you to at least go to a consultation. It shouldn't cost you anything to just go in and get more information straight from the doctor about uh, the procedure and what it could mean for you and your vision. Thank you all for watching this video today. I hope you found it informative and helpful and educational. Uh, I am not a professional. I am just sharing from my own personal experience, but I hope you were able to learn from it today. And I wish you the happiest of days. Stay healthy, everyone.